After about two weeks, we are heading out of San Cristobal. Hopefully it's easier than it was getting in here. Wish us luck. Gracias. Gracias. Hasta, Hasta luego. luego. Goodbye, San Nicolas camping. We so enjoyed you. Whoa. Whoa. Tope there. Yeah, it was. Well, we found an alternate route out of here. The road we came in on just going the opposite direction towards out of town. So far it seems better. We walked it a little bit yesterday all the way up to the main road. It's far less busy and a little bit wider in most spots, so can't complain. The first time I thought that truck was coming this way. I know. I was, I was like, no! Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Well, we scraped the front bumper attempting to make a very sharp curve on a very big drop off. <laughs> you got a big edge right here. You're gonna have to go up. Oh, there's a dump truck too. Okay. Whoa. But seems like it's all fine. We got turned around and we're moving again. Head northeast. I'll just have to touch up the paint a little bit. but so far so good and we've only got 500 meters left till we make it to the toll road I checked our Facebook groups the Bloqueos in Chiapas groups this morning and several people uh, said that it was free Libre to go the way we're trying to go so that's all good news so fingers crossed it stays that way till we get <laughs> get through it seems like there are only a few cities uh, that I've found, at least on our app, um, in Chiapas, where they have very yeah, frequent roadblocks. One of them is here in San Cristobal, and there's a town a little bit south of here called Comitan, which also very frequently has roadblocks. That's the way we're going, and we're going to head through there, and then actually pretty close to the Guatemala border to do a few fun things. Still in Mexico. But hopefully once we get past Comitan, we'll be in the clear of at least the typical roadblocks. So, we'll see. Aside from this taxi, you're good on my way. Ay, ay, ay. Good job. As we leave San Cristobal area, and head towards Comitan, there were some military personnel on both sides of the road. Yeah. Well, maybe this is where they've cleared the blockade recently. Maybe. That's my guess. I think probably just trying to keep the road open. I think that's probably where roadblocks often occur so gave them a wave thankful for them being there doing their job we had initially planned to go to Palenque today however we've changed that plan um, again due to concern with roadblocks so after doing a lot of research and really stressing out about it for a couple of days <laughs> and several hours specifically yesterday. We decided it just wasn't worth the risk. Um, it looks like there's a town that you have to go through from San Cristobal to Palenque, at least the direct route, which only takes about four hours, I think. Maybe five. Anyways, the longer road is more like 11 or 12 hours. And you have to go through this town called Ocosingo, which is known for not being very friendly towards tourists. Um, they're very, very much known for having a lot of roadblocks and uh, there has been some violence in the past towards tourists in that area. Um, unfortunately, on my Blockeos group, the Blockades Facebook group, people 
don't often post about the roadblocks there, so I don't know if that means even Mexicans attempt to avoid that area when they can. Um, compared to where we're going through Comitán, there are lots of Mexicans each day asking, is the road free today? Are there blockades? No, there aren't. Yes, there are. You can get a lot of information, pretty up-to-date, hour-by-hour kind of information on that road. So it just felt a little bit safer knowing that people are traveling that way. So I think we're going to still attempt to go to Palenque, but uh, just not the direct route. Um, just seems like it wasn't worth the risk. So we're trying to make safe decisions and do what's in our best interest. And I don't think it would have been worth it. So change of plans, but we're going to see some more cool things and hopefully all goes smoothly. of little towns on this road and it seems like each town has a different variety of cute things that they're selling often wooden things that they make the last few towns we went through had dog houses and some rocking horses and bookshelves and we haven't actually seen that many dog houses they're cute they're all brightly colored painted up nice pretty fun but each little town also comes with several, like at least five or six topes, some worse than others. But we were just saying that the shocks, the new shocks David put on seem to be doing better than the old ones did. Testing them out pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. There's definitely still some bounce going over topes, but you can't expect it to completely go away. I think the amount of time after we go over the tope where we're, we're bouncing is definitely less with these new shocks than it was uh, with the ranchos. So that's nice. Plenty of uh, more testing opportunities to come. A lot of hustle and bustle here, huh? The streets in this town are busy. And they're pretty small, but I think they're still bigger than the streets back in San Cristobal. <laughs> we're not all the way through the city yet, don't jinx us. <laughs> place the shocks in the back of the truck but I always forget to raise the ladder up when I air them up or lower them down and then that puts the whole weight of the truck in the camper kind of on that ladder whenever you lower it down if the feet of the ladder kind of get wedged in so I think it uh, may have broke there or it just came on screen again I don't know hard to say it was in there when we left I know that for sure <laughs> not a big deal I didn't have the exact same length bolt to put back in there so I put a bolt in there that was way too long with a lock nut on it on it and we'll just have to hopefully come across the hardware store in our travels sometime soon so we can get the, the right bolt to stick in there I was glad we didn't take the uh, more sketchy road 
uh, since we did have to stop and do that and I had to get all my tools out to find the bolt so drew a little bit of attention but it was a safe area to stop and pretty quick fix we've made it into Comitan so that's good news no blockades on this side which I think is where they usually are between Comitan and San Cristobal so fingers crossed it continues to be smooth sailing from here we passed a couple of small hardware stores but none of them have seemed super easy to get to and we're just gonna try to keep on moving for now and get out of out of town before we stop at one so we'll see what we find the rest of our drive was uneventful so that's good uh, we've been driving for maybe three hours maybe a little bit more it's 1 30 p.m. and we've made it to our destination look how pretty oh my gosh so this area has five lakes and only some of them you're allowed to get in and swim or kayak some of them to keep them pristine they don't let anybody in just stunning supposed to do back all the way up yeah maybe i don't know if that's really worth it look how steep that is very steep better here we can show you a different vantage point of that road we were supposed to go down this road which uh, it doesn't look so terrible right here but let me tell you it was but we made it down here's the lake we're almost to this camping spot so pretty oh my goodness a couple of sweet puppies came up to us as soon as we were setting up camp and one of them, she actually came right up behind me and licked my hand and I've been hanging out ever since. And they're pretty skinny, so we normally save leftover cat food, the dry cat food, that the kitties don't eat and put it in a bag uh, to give to dogs and cats when we see them and they look like they're hungry. So I just got some out for these buddies and the little chihuahua didn't seem interested, but this lady's lapping it up try to do our part when we can it really kind of breaks your heart when you see them so skinny and sadly we've seen some that are much skinnier than she is are you okay with that dog having your leftovers it sure is windy but oh my gosh can't beat these views we're still around 5,000 feet elevation. So even though the sun's pretty intense, it doesn't feel too bad. And I think it's gonna get pretty cool tonight. Quiet voices in the night. The time 
was running out of sight Lonely wind is passing by Tries to carry all the whispers that it finds The walls are listening when we talk If you liked this video, let us know by liking and subscribing. And don't forget, you can see more of the journey on Instagram and TikTok. Cheers, friends!